Okay. Are you there, Tudor? Yeah. I'm alive. <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> okay. Um, Tudor is with me tonight. And what better than inviting a pioneer woman like Tudor Drugos? Seriously. Um, I will introduce you properly in, in a second. Um, to have a little informal chat about the International Women's Day. Tudor and I already <laughs> did like in our chat on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a lot to say about, about women's rights. So this is just going to be an informal chat about, um, well, women's day in, in a historical perspective as well. And Tudid will share with us some of our, her own experiences. And we were just talking about the importance of, of still celebrating the 8th of March. So. Okay, Tudit, welcome and thank you so much for, you know, being here, chatting with us. Thank you, and I'm happy to be here. And I just, I just say that you're a pioneer and you really are with your studies and your books. And uh, I know we talked a lot about this uh, because I'm, uh, I'm, admiring your strength and your ability to really literally traveling the world telling people your opinion about dogs dog trading and dog behavior and uh, people have been threatening you people have been doing all kinds of things because they disagree with you but you still keep doing this for many many years more than 50 years now right yeah sure uh, actually, I started uh, much uh, further back than that, because I was only five years old when I decided seriously that I was going to work for dogs, it, not with dogs, but for dogs yeah. when I grew up. And it took many, many years because of how society is. And that would make me so uh, keen on, on uh, getting connections with the uh, women who want to do something and try to help them and promote them and so on because i know how hard it is they try to stop you everywhere they set obstacles for you they try to limit you in so many ways uh, young men get uh, bank loans uh, as soon as they have an idea for something women do not i was refused even a loan to to get an apartment uh, so uh, there are so many obstacles for young women today to, to reach something. I've been through it all, all the time. So t tell me about it. Uh, we talked earlier today about this, too. Did you said that you did not get a loan for an apartment some no. years ago. But hmm. that's, you know, that's something that can happen to all of us. But in your case, it was because you were a woman, right? Yes, they told me straight out that I did not get loans to women. And, and that is uh, a, a, a big bank in Norway. And what time was that? Like, what year was that approximately in the 70s, 80s? When uh, In the 80s, yeah. So in the 80s, it was not normal to give a mortgage to, to single women, basically. No, not at all. So uh, even if you had a, a full-time job, you had income and you had not been criminal in any way, they were not going to give it to women. All the, all the money went to men who wanted to do something. And when I finally uh, took the step and would like to start my own dog school, I knew I had to if I was going to work the way I wanted. And I had to start uh, building it up. And I needed some money for simple things, not a lot. So uh, I thought at that time they had a, a thing going. They offered, uh, the authorities offered money to people who wanted to start new, uh, new businesses. And uh, I, uh, I was applying and there were about 200 others who also did it. And of course, a lot of them got, I did not. Uh, and two years later, I was the only one who still had a business going. 
<laughs> so uh, it, uh, the, the way they give out money to people who want to do something is very, uh, what's the it subjective. Mm -hmm. And they don't really say that. I, I know, and we discussed it. It's um, mm. the numbers show actually the numbers for Norwegian startups, companies. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't remember the exact numbers, but something like an incredible 80% or something are going yeah. bankrupt within the four, yeah. first three years. But it was uh, about 80%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the ones that does not, they're mainly, I mean, a lot of them, uh, well, the ones that keep going have a high percentage of women uh, yeah. that start the company. Mm -hmm. But you also told me something about applying for jobs early in the, in the oh, yes. 70s. I, I, when I got divorced and I, I had a child to support, uh, I had a quite a good uh, background with schools, university, all kinds of uh, jobs. But I couldn't get a job because I wouldn't uh, let uh, divorced women have a job. It was really, it, it was really a difficult time. But you know, I can understand that many women give up when they come in these situations. It's too difficult for them. They meet too many hindrances and obstacles on the way. So you have to be really driven and be very stubborn if you really want to go on. And that's what I try to tell the people we uh, educate, the ones who want to be dog trainers and similar, that it doesn't help to get everything uh, given to you in form of uh, information and knowledge, and then you're going to sit there and just uh, believe that things are happening. You have to really go for it. You have to have a stamina. You have to be driven by an interest in doing something. You have to be enthusiastic for the, the job you, you want to take on. And if you don't have it, you won't succeed in any way. And it's a, you really have to have that guts and you have to take critic, you have to take, uh, you know, they will attack you, they will be nasty to you, but you have to take it. That's how it is. So how do you, so what, what do you, how do you cope with all the critics that you've been, you know, experiencing throughout your professional life working with, with animals? Some of it is quite hurtful, of course, but I have learned not to start uh, defending myself. It's no way I will do that. So if they want to critic me, they can do that. And I uh, try to ignore it because uh, I have worked so much. I know more or less what I'm doing. I'm my own worst critic in many ways. I always know when I make mistakes so I can correct it again. Uh, and you have to be like that, but you really have to take critic without being crushed completely. That doesn't work. So uh, maybe that is uh, why uh, there are not uh, women enough who are building up their own uh, businesses because not all of them are used to that. They have been maybe uh, shielded too much before. Very often they're fathers they decide what they're going to do and what they're going to to mean and think and uh, whatever and then they go straight into relationships and get the same uh, uh, relation there very often uh, so uh, i think that is one of the reasons why we are still wanting to see more strong women doing real good jobs and how yeah so we, we would yeah so how can we do that can oh i have so many questions <laughs> yeah it, it, it is difficult yeah we cannot change uh, the way society is we cannot change men 
many of them are okay and fine and supportive and all that, but many, many are of not. You. Many of you, not all. <laughs> yeah. not, no, <laughs> there are many who are not supportive at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, then you have to decide, do I want to live like this? Or do I have um, a passion that I want to live out and work with? If you have that, you have to think twice about what you're doing. I divorced. That was uh, <laughs> my solution. And that's your solution. And for me, that was the only right thing. But um, sometimes you might say that women are the worst critics of other women. What yes, absolutely. That? Yeah. yeah. And that is also something I would like to change. And I hate to hear all the bad talk about each other and the slandering about each other. Uh, I, I don't like it at all. And I cannot change it, but all I can do is try to tell people, be honest about things, be, be, be good people, concentrate on the job you're doing and not so much about your neighbor. And, I mean, it's easy to criticize others, and sometimes we also do that, but we try to do it objectively, don't we? I, tr I try at least. And, and I don't have any children, but I have friends with children. They have told me that, you know, it's hard for them when other women are telling them because they're making them feel bad. Oh, so you're not staying mm -hmm. home taking care of your children. So they're actually yeah. using the whole female thing against you know, mm. other mm. women and their mm. women themselves. So we should yeah. just, yeah, we need to support. I, each other. I have never been one of those uh, uh, women who went on in demonstrations and on the barricades and screamed a lot about things. Uh, we are all different. Some do that. I did not because I had one passion in life, and that was to become someone who could do something for dogs. That was my great passion, and I was driven by that. So uh, I didn't think about going on the bar barricades. That that was not, not my style. If you do, fine with you. We are all different. Mm. But do you think it's important to have a, a network, especially for women? Or do you think? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Because men will not understand it completely. We are different. Men have their boys' uh, relationship, which we all know about. Uh, and uh, uh, women need uh, support from other women who, who want them to succeed. Mm. And that's a good thing between you, you uh, us too, Lisbeth. I think both of us want these, uh, these women to succeed. We want them to become good, we are always on the outlook for some who are uh, starting to be good at uh, having talks, doing something special. And it cheers me up so much when I meet a, a woman that is absolutely really good at what she's doing and have the enthusiasm for her job. That is so, that is so inspiring. And talking about inspiring, you told me that you have two, especially two people that you have found some inspiration from, or you 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 kind of you know look at them as good people. Remember? Yeah, uh, yes, I know. Uh, I can uh, I can uh, tell about them, but um, I also want to say something in addition there. Uh, the one I really admired from the very beginning was the Afro-American Rosa Parks, who changed uh, the whole situation in America and started the revolution by just going quietly into a bus and sitting down in a bus that was not for colored people. And that is something that I still get goosebumps when I think about it that situation. Can you imagine a, a young, maybe scared woman who does this? I think it's fantastic. That is what I would call a power woman. So that's something that something that's 
sticks with you, that feeling, it's something yes. that she yes. did that touches you, the, yeah. you know. Being, because being she, she knew what she had to do and she knew she had to do something and that was what she could do. Yeah. And that is with all of us. We need to do what we can do. We all have our different ways of working. I mean, you are doing all this fantastic work on internet with courses and webinars and all that sort of thing. And that's not, not me at all. I have to do other things. Oh, you we are, are showing up. Every time I tell you to show up, you are showing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even if it's not my natural habitat, <laughs> I will still do it. I prefer still today at my age, I still prefer to get a dog in my hands. And as everybody tells me, every time I get a dog to do something with, my whole face lights up and I smile because that is me. That is my job. That is my uh, uh, drive. Yeah. 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 My passion in life. Yeah. So, uh, and that is what I, I must tell. That is what I miss in most dog trainers we are dealing with. And I tell them mm -hmm. this is not standard because I say them directly in their face. I want to see you smile and like what you're doing. And all the classes I had, I could sit watching them when they were doing things with the dogs and they looked like, <laughs> Very we have to do it, we have to do it, we have to do it. <laughs> That's not how it should be. It yeah. should be, yes, yes, I'm working with a dog, yes. Yeah, the difference is enormous. We talk, yeah, we talked about that as well. The way you see how the dog reacts when the human is smiling mm -hmm. more, it's a bit more relaxed in her body language. Yeah, yeah. And most of the dogs coming to our center, they usually end up sleeping on my feet, and that's uh, for me. That's quite natural. Be like that all my life. Because you are relaxed and, and you want, you know, your they body feel that I like them. Yeah. They feel that I really have a good uh, feeling about them. And those know that. Mm. Who was the second person um, it, um, we talked about? And why it could it could be have it could have been a lot of people because there are many I have really admired but Eliana Roosevelt is uh, one of my favorites. All the work she did to change things for ordinary people, working in the shadow behind the president, she would have been the best president. I I have no doubt about it. But uh, in America, you won't get a female president in a long time yet. You think? Yeah. I don't think so. But it's so interesting to hear because we are all looking at you, you know, you are our yeah. inspiration. So it's that's why it's very, very interesting. And I think a lot of people will agree with me that they love to hear that you too have, have other women that you look, you know, to for inspiration. Um, it's I can't remember what what the saying is but it's something like we should not have anyone I mean to look up to someone is maybe not the right word we should have people that inspire us and yeah. look up to some we don't have to copy them or anything it's just yeah. you know having role models mm. you know more yeah. or less and I, I i don't think those two women are even my role models but they told me something that is very important what you need to do you do and even if you have to fight for it and have a hard time doing it you do it and i i think that is so uh, uh, coming so well from those two two women but there's another type type of women i want to tell about because when I moved up here to the West Coast uh, with the sea and the fishing and everything, uh, I discovered the fisherwomen. 
and they have my admiration. It all started with some hardworking women drying fish on the rocks in this area, which was not a town, it was nothing at all. And the whole, uh, the whole town, the whole city, and all its culture and uh, whatever is built on these hardworking women. Uh, thank goodness that has been uh, acknowledged. So she has her own statue in town. But I think we should think about things like that. There are so many women who do jobs in the background and is never acknowledged for the hard work they're doing. They're on the, on the small farms, the fisherwomen. Oh, God, they really did that job. Maybe some of them did not, uh, could not take it and uh, was crushed by it. But so many strong women did a fantastic job for a whole life. And, okay, so because we are in Norway, in Scandinavia, it's it's known to be the one of the best places to be women, to be a woman, you know, when it comes to equal rights and so on. But we still have quite a way to go, even here in Norway. Oh yes, wages. Oh wages. yes, <laughs> the differences. When I grew up, um, it was no question about uh, becoming a electrician or a carpenter, a pilot or anything like that, that was totally, completely out of the question. So uh, they always, uh, you know how adults are, what are you going to be when you grow up? What are you going to do then? And it made me sick and tired because I always said, I'm going to work with animals. And then they all said, oh, then you have to marry a farmer. Yeah. And I can remember even as a five-year-old, I said, people are so stupid. You don't marry a farmer if you're going to work with animals. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody knows what they do with animals. Yeah. They kill them. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and at that time, the only thing a well-educated woman could become was a nurse or a teacher. Mm. And I didn't want to become any of it refused flat so that was not very easy so times have changed of course i see many uh, women today who are both electricians and and uh, all kind of uh, all kind of work you can think of absolutely i met some pilots and i met some that uh, they fly in rescue helicopters in this area fantastic pilots in rescue helicopters. So uh, today you can become almost what you want. But it's only a couple of years ago since uh, females were allowed to ski jump. Yeah. In yeah. competition. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. is very recent. Mm -hmm. The men f had been fighting it all the time. They had to give up in the end, but so there's still there are still some barriers mm -hmm. and some barricades to to climb yet. So, how do you see the uh, how has it improved? I mean, um, what is the most important most important things that improved? Do you think from you were young like? you know, in your teens, 20, you know, early 20s, compared to today? What, what do you think young women, we were talking about this, how important it is to still have this day and people should be reminded that there's still a lot to work for. Oh, well. yes, because they have more choices. They can choose almost anything today. And... Uh, but still, when they, for instance, get into a job like, uh, for instance, police 
or electrician in a company or something, they have to be bullied by the others. They, mm. they do have to, to take a lot of bullying still in many places. But what was it like to, to have, when you don't know the choices how, for you who has always been, you know, a, a great personality with your own, you know, way of thinking and probably very independent from you when you were a child. How frustrating was that? Were you just used to it by the society around you, not being able, you know, to do any kind of work and... Bio, you know, house, kind of I thing. think it has to do with my personality that uh, if I see a door closing, I just wait and see if it's possible to open one yeah. of the others. Uh, and um, if I saw that everything's uh, because I really wanted to be a carpenter a long time, I love mm -hmm. carpentry, but that was totally out of the question. So uh, I just uh, put that aside and uh, I looked for other things. And I, because I'm a born observer, I've been an observer all my life. I just observed and observed and observed people, society, animals. And that way you get some indications on where to go. I'm Small so happy step. you did not become a carpenter student because <laughs> dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did so try it later in life, so that yes, that's true. I, got that's true. I never gave up. <laughs> that's true. So, what is the important thing to think of for young or the younger generations today. Now I can say it myself, I'm past 50, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can see it in a way, it is more difficult for them because they have so many more choices now. Uh, so I know that many of them don't really know what to do. So what I would advise any young person, try many different jobs. Try how it is to work here, work there, see what you can do, challenge yourself to do jobs that maybe is uh, a little bit out of the, the ordinary for you. Uh, try to see so many possibilities and ways to go as you can. That's what young age is for, both for people and dogs. That's a time for exploring trying to find out what your, the rest of your life should be. And that means not sitting there and say, oh, I, I, look, I will you do some gaming. I will do Try to open your eyes and observe what's going on. Go out, try different things. And some, someday you'll find out, I want to do that. That's my job. That's what I would like to do. And when it comes to being with dogs, working with caring for animals in general, Turid, do you think women have any special traits that men don't have? Do we have any advantages and disadvantages? Mm. I don't know. What do you think? Yes, in a way, I think so. And I think it, in a way, comes forward today because I would say that maybe 85, 90 percentage of all the, uh, all the ones who try to learn something about dogs, they are women. And, Most and of why? Are women. Do you know why? And have you seen a change in that? What was that like 50 years ago? Seriously, when you went to, a, to some kind of dog event? Were there more women, more men? It was, when I think back in the old days, I, there was, it was so different then because there were so few uh, events that was more or less general. Uh, but when it came, it came to training, it was only men. Mm. Uh, and that has to do with the fact that men, in a way, 
like more to have control of things. They need to have control much more than women do. And I think that's genetic. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first uh, the, the first training classes I can remember in the late uh, 40s, that was only men in military suits and marching along like they were going to the to the war. And you were there. I, I was just watching it and finding it disgusting. Okay. <laughs> so you were just observing as usual. Oh, observing, observing. So already then I took a stand against that kind of training. Mm -hmm. I knew that was not right. I couldn't do that. That was not me. So uh, observing, looking around, seeing what's going on and how people do things. It's very important. Mm. You cannot sit at home and do gaming and, and uh, sticking your nose into the mobile phone all the time if you want to learn what you are going to do. And I hope that all young people find something they are passionate about and really love to do. But I want to go back to the question about why is there so many... You know, I got a comment on one of the pictures on our Facebook page the other day from a man. Uh, mm -hmm. And he rightly asked, uh, is this dog trainer education for women only? Because he only saw women yeah. on, on our photos. And I said, no, no, no. Men are most welcome. So why yeah. do you think, uh, or what has happened? Has there been any changes and why is it? I don't know. I have no idea. We have made some jokes about it because uh, this has been all the time I've been uh, training dogs. It's been like that. So when the military style obedience classes started to get less and less, we got more women into it and then it escalated. So it's now the other way around. But uh, it might have to do with the uh, the form that has changed or training i'm not sure i i really don't know there yeah there are a couple but of men there, but there are big differences there are men many men of course who are okay with the way we are doing training also and many women that uh, are not okay with it because they are more on the rougher side and so on so but it is a clear tendency. That's right. Absolutely. Oh, can I ask you quite what you think? This is only about you, your, you know, I, I don't think you have any, or you might have any signs. I don't know. Would there be, it's just because I have all these questions all the time. Would there be any difference from, uh, with, for a dog that grew up with only women or only men? Depends on the, the men and the women, I think. Yeah. Uh, I see uh, during all these years, I've been uh, doing consultations and training dogs. Uh, I have also met a lot of different people. And uh, I must say that uh, the percentage of men who are too, uh, too harsh, too angry, I would even say aggressive to dogs is quite high compared to women being it. That must have to do with the fact that we become mothers and uh, care for, for uh, kids. So it must be a bigger part of that kind of empathy in women than men, mostly. Mm. It must have to be something with that. Uh, I still see the difference. Uh, in, a, in one family, you can see how one dog is, is more uh, attracted to one person in the family and a little afraid of the other. And mostly, it is the man he's a bit afraid of. Mm. So uh, there is something there, but I, 
I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know. <laughs> Even if I have a, an exam in it, I, the, I, I'm not that. That's not me. It's difficult. I can just observe and I can just see what's uh, going on. I heard uh, a theory from a dog trainer years ago who said that a lot uh, uh, of breeders were female. Mm. The most breeders were female um, mm. and uh, were caring for the puppies, you know? So mm. um, his, it was a man. Mm. Mm. His claim is that a puppy would be less used to being around men because a lot of females were there when there was you know when they were puppies so they need that's that he said that that might be one of the reasons why a lot of uh, puppies or, or young dogs have to get more used to men the way they walk a little bit different the way you know their voice are and so on i don't I know. think that's uh, to take it a bit too far because dogs are very adaptable adaptable they are uh, when the puppies get out in the world and start to see all kinds of people men women and everything in between they they will they they will accept that they will learn that they learn to be social to many different things uh, all their lives even older dogs can get used to new types of people I had one dog, uh, the first I had as an adult, uh, at that time it was very, very rare to see any uh, colored people in our country. And she saw her first colored uh, person when she was uh, nearly 10 years old. And she looked and she looked and she looked and couldn't really understand what this was, but she figured it out. And then it was okay, all right. Hmm. So uh, today we have so many different uh, kind of people in our society. So they see, see so much strange. Yeah, you can't and generalize uh, like that anymore. They, yeah. they, they are, uh, dogs are adaptable. Even if they grow up in a family with only uh, females around them, when they start to meet uh, men out there, that will be okay. If yeah. the men... Uh, behave properly yeah. <laughs> so Not that's no excuse them. then that's no excuse then no and it's no excuse to behave badly anyway no that's true that's true okay so we need to wrap this up uh, in about five minutes what more important things can we say about how can we inspire so how can you inspire everyone, including men, of course, but today is Women's yeah. Day, so we're talking mainly to women. Um, how can you help me inspire them? Uh, what Do you know something? I, I think I have to, to discourage you just a little bit because uh, <laughs> when people always tell me that, what can I motivate my dogs with? I always answer them, you cannot motivate a dog. It, the motivation has to come from inside. He must feel like doing it. And it's the same with people. You cannot in any way motivate somebody to, to, to start doing a certain kind of job with, with dogs if the motivation is not in them. You just can't. But you can help by saying something. If you tell me something, you can help me motivate me to stop eating chocolate, for example. It's not easy. <laughs> No, no. it can help but okay so inspire let's use the word inspire how yes, inspire? and also <laughs> and also maybe uh, support them yeah uh, tell them that this is this is something you can do and you can do it this and this way start and see what you feel about it and so on and we can teach them uh, good uh, things to to work with so they can see if it's something for them I know I have motivated or inspired people to start their own businesses who didn't have it before. Uh, among other things, uh, several people who have started their own publishing companies mm -hmm. and who are actually making it as a living today. And I'm very happy about that. That's a good job they love to do. And I know I made them 
dare to take the step. Yes, we can do that. But the motivation for doing it, for that kind of job, must be in them. Yeah, absolutely. Because I agree. I, agree. Do it. Yeah. I talk a lot about uh, it as well. Because it has to be a real felt passion. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But one last question. How do you... Were you born as a newborn baby with a lot of confidence to, to it? How could you stand... You know, you've been standing in front of a lot of people saying things about dogs that they disagree on. You know, you've been, yeah. how, where do you get the com your confidence from? Please, I didn't have any confidence at all because I had the parents who decided everything, every step I should take. And I remember that I just decided to shut up and don't listen to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, in my case, it's not so much self-confidence that has come little by little as I saw how good I really was at it. Uh, but um, it's more a stubbornness. And that again comes from the, the passion and the, the, uh, I knew what I had to work with. I knew I had to in some way or other. And I just had to find the right way. So it's a stubbornness there. And then I had to learn a lot of things. And I just want to say one thing. Sure. There's so much talk today about power women. They are bloggers and they stand up and they are such uh, in fashion and uh, showing themselves. To me, they are not power women at all. Power women, all the ones of you out there, a power woman is one who makes a decision of something they want to work with, something that is their passion to do because they really want to do it. They really want to help somebody like I want to help dogs. And then you go for it and you work on it and you don't give up. Then all this manicure and, and mascara and fashion clothes and all that sort of stuff is no worth at all. Zero, nil, that has nothing to do with power. It's what you do. It's what you do of real things. Yeah. And I want to see so many passionate women out there doing their job whether it is fishing or carpentry or knitting or whatever on earth you really want to do that's what i like to see to take control of your own life yes yeah and don't let yourself be controlled by people who just do it because they want control and nothing else. Get out of that as quick as you can. What better way of ending this? Thank you so much, Tuli. That was really a good ending to it. Maybe We're quite good, aren't we? We, we are, are quite well, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good team. Good. <laughs> Women <laughs> power. Yeah. Real power. power. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you very much. Happy female day. Happy, no, what did I say? I, I mean, bye. <laughs> I'm <a little> confused. <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay, everyone, bye. <laughs>